Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome back to my channel. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make an infinity scarf using my Addy knitting machine. So let's get started. Now for this project, I'll be using my Addy 46 pin needle machine. And I'll also use some waste yarn. Now I have some contrasting colors, so make sure that you have some contrasting color to your working yarn because you want to be able to really see the stitches that you'll need to pick up later. And my working yarn that I'll be using today to make my project is Yarn Lane Facets. This is 100% acrylic. It's a medium weight number four yarn. And I absolutely love the colors. I think they're actually really beautiful. It's a very pretty blue for wintry feel. So let's get started on this project because I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Now, first thing I'm going to do is take my waist yarn. And I'm going to make sure that my counter is set to zero. So I'll go ahead and set my counter to zero. And I'll also make sure that I am on the first needle of the machine. Now, for my Addy Express knitting machine, being on the first needle means that my three black needles will be on my right hand side. So let's just go ahead and make sure that your machine is positioned correctly. And I'll give you guys a little bit of a close up now so you can see what it looks like. Let me position that over for you. I want to make sure that you guys get a great view of this. OK, so now that I have my waist yarn, what I'm going to do is what's called a cast on process. So for the cast on process, you're going to begin with your waist yarn and you're going to make a loop. And you're going to loop that on the very first needle of your machine. And it should look something like this. Now, casting on is just a process that you do for the first round of the machine. And what you're going to do is a weaving type motion. So you're going to be positioning the yarn in the front of the needle and the back of the needle for each alternating pin. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So as you can see in the first pin, I do have it looped. And then what I'm going to do is slowly crank so that the second needle pops up and I'm going to position the yarn on the back of the needle. And you can see that here. OK, perfect. Then I'm going to continue to crank and you're going to move it to the front, then to the back, then to the front. And I will continue this motion all the way around on my first round. Now you want to do this slowly just to make sure that you position your yarn correctly because this will set the guideline for the rest of your project. So you really want to make sure that this part is done correctly. So please just take your time. You'll need to be very patient as you move along here. Now, if you were going to do, let's say, a knitted hat, there are some projects that really do not require you to use waste yarn. But I do recommend using waste yarn because it just leaves your projects with a nicer feel and it makes it really easy when you are required to cinch the ends of your project or you're going to be crocheting. This kind of holds the stitches in place so that you can finish off your project. And then the waste yarn is really easy to unravel towards the end, but we'll get to all of that in just a few minutes. So as you can see, my black needles are popping back up and I'm right back to the very first white needle here. So my three black needles are to my right. So I'm going to go ahead and open the yarn gauge. I'm going to go ahead and put the yarn inside and close the lever. Now also tug it down so that it goes into the tension guide. But I also like to position the yarn so that it flows through my fingers. That way, if anything gets caught up on the yarn, I'll feel it on my fingers and not so much on the machine at first. So I'd rather have the opportunity to correct the error since there's some type of tension or maybe there's a knot or got caught up or hung up on something. I'm able to fix it and the stitches on my project won't be impacted because I would have figured it out from the motion of my hand. You'll, you'll kind of get a feel for it as the yarn continues to flow through your fingers. You'll kind of just get used to that feeling when you know that it's being tugged on something. You'll feel it on your hand before it impacts your project. So what you're going to want to do now is do 10 rounds 
of the machine with your waste yarn. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll want to make sure that you're watching your needles, at least for the very first couple of rounds, because you want to make sure that your needles are positioned correctly. The yarn is being taken in by the needles, and that way you'll position yourself for success on your project. Now, once you feel a little bit more comfortable, you can go ahead and go a little bit faster. And remember, we're going to do 10 rounds. Okay, so we've reached our 10 rounds and I'm just going to open up the guide here, the yarn guide, and I'm going to remove my yarn from the tension and I'm going to go ahead and drop it into the middle. What you can do is cut your yarn. I don't like to cut my yarn because I like to reuse it for other projects. So I will just drop it into the middle and we'll grab that later. So now you're gonna go ahead and take your working yarn and you're going to want to start with that one. So let's see. I would leave about two to three arm length worth of working yarn. And I would bring that into the middle of the machine. And then you're going to drop your yarn into the yarn guide, close it up and pull it through the tension as well on the bottom. And now you're going to continue to crank this for the very first row. You just want to make sure that your yarn is being pulled in by the needles. So you want to do that slowly. And then after the first couple of rounds on your machine, then you can go ahead and go a little bit faster. And we're going to do 200 rounds with our working yarn. And it's pretty much going to use almost the entire skein. So let's get started. Now my scheme is about, let's see, 279 yards, just to give you an idea of how big of a scheme you'll need in order to do this project. But 279 yards is perfectly fine for this project. So this is going to be enough for us to complete the infinity scarf. Alrighty, so let's get started here and get cranking. Now one thing you may wanna do is just kind of tug on the yarn that you have just a little bit just to make sure it's not that loose because it will be loose since it was the first round so you just want to tug it just to make it a little bit more secure and then we'll just keep on cranking now remember you'll have to do about 195 rounds of this so i'll meet you back here once we're halfway there Okay, so we are about 40 rounds in and I want to show you something that I like to do is just a little technique that I use just to ensure my stitches are cinched. Let me just give you an overhead view. Now, as you can see, these stitches are starting to fall down. You can see the beautiful colors that are working through with the yarn that I'm using. You can also see the waist yarn that I use that has that contrasting color. So what I like to do is just go and reach on the bottom of your machine and just kind of give your yarn a little bit of a tug. And just you want to check your stitches, make sure you don't have any drop stitches and just make sure that everything looks good. Just give it a little tug and then roll the bottom onto itself. So what you're going to want to be watching as you continue to do the rounds is you're going to want to make sure that your bottom of your yarn does not touch the table because that will distort the stitches because the tension will be a little bit different and you don't want that to happen. So just make sure that you continually check and just roll the yarn up onto itself to kind of pull it away from that table. You'll just need a little bit of space. Now, some people have a table that has like a little hole in it and it allows the yarn to completely drop, which is absolutely great. I don't have that, so I'm just using this on this table and I think most people will probably do the same thing. So one way around that is to continually roll up the bottom of your project onto itself just to make sure that you are not going to distort the tension of your yarn. So now let's go ahead and keep on cranking and just keep watching your gauge. I am at about 40 rounds so far and we've got 200 in total to go to. So let's keep on cranking.
Okay, so we've made it to our 200 rounds of our working yarn. And we also had 10 rows of our waist yarn. So we have a total of 210 on our counter. So now what we're going to do is throw in another round of waist yarn. And I'll do about 10 more rounds of the waist yarn. And then we'll be ready to take it off of the machine. And let me just position this over so that you can see. I think that's a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to do, as you can see, we don't have too much left of the yarn. So it uses the entire scheme. I did say you'll have a little bit left over. So this is all I have. So if you wanted to do just a couple more rounds, you can do that. That will just make your project just a little bit longer. Or you can stop right now and then throw in your waste yarn and start to finish off your project. So I decided to do just a couple more rounds just so that I can use up this yarn. So I'm going to do about five more rows of this and then we'll be throwing in the waste yarn. So let me just do that. Now, one other thing that you're going to need for this project is a tapestry needle or what's also known as a knitting needle. Now, if you have the Centro or the Addy machine, they did come with a needle. This is one of the ones that came with my Centro. And then the Addy machine had a red knitting yarn or tapestry needle that looked like this with a bent tip. So either one, regardless which machine you're using, will be fine. I do prefer the bent tip needle because that does help to pick up the stitches. But for this specific project, because we're using waste yarn, you actually don't even need the bent tip. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Centro knitting needle because it does have a bigger eye and easier for me to thread. But go ahead and gather your tapestry needle or knitting needle and we can finish this project off. Okay, so if you're following along, I did a couple more rows and my total counter is 220, which includes 10 rounds of the waste yarn. So this is how much yarn I have left. So I'm fine with that. So I'm going to go ahead and open my tension guide and remove the thread. I'm going to go ahead and put it inside here for now. And then I'm going to take my waste yarn and don't need too much of a long tail there. I'll go ahead and insert it into the guide, close that up, pull through the tension, and you'll notice that the yarn is just above or in front of the white needle, which is my first needle. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this, and we're going to do 10 more rounds with the waste yarn. Now, you can go ahead and cut this off. You don't necessarily have to leave it on. What you can do is just leave about 20 or so inches and then go ahead and cut your working yarn. So let's go ahead and do that. Do your 10 rounds with your waist yarn and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we've now completed our 10 rows with the waist yarn. So I'm going to go ahead let me put the front camera. I'm going to open up my gauge here. I'm going to remove the waste yarn and I'm going to go ahead and put it in the middle and close that up. Now, here's the fun part about using waste yarn. We're going to go ahead and do one full round with the waste yarn inside so it will not be feeding any yarn. And then you'll do another round and then you'll see that your yarn will fall and collapse into the middle of your machine. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first round, all it's doing is removing. And then the second round is where you'll begin to see your project fall into the middle of your machine. Once you're done with that, you can remove your yarn. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set my machine off to the side. And I will begin to unravel. It kind of looks like a little donut, right? <laughs> so let's just unravel this. And we're going to have one very long tube. And I'll just fold it over. Now you should still have your waste yarn attached on both ends. And that's perfectly fine. You can just tuck them inside for right now so that they're out of the way. 
Now, one thing that you're going to want to do when you first take your project off of the knitting machine, go ahead and don't be afraid. Go ahead and give it a little pull and stretch it out. The reason I like to do this is because I like to set my stitches, get them comfortable to where they are. And this pulling and tugging motion kind of helps to do that. Then I'll just turn it over and do the same thing again. I love the way this blue yarn shows. It's absolutely beautiful. This is going to make a great winter project, a winter gift for someone. I think I'm going to go ahead and gift this to someone. I have some relatives up north, and I think this would be a great Christmas gift for them, especially with the winter weather that they're having. It's extremely cold up there, so I'll go ahead and gift this over to them. I think it's going to be a great gift. So I think now we're ready for our next step. And this is going to require you to bring out your tapestry needle. So go ahead and take that out. And then I want you to go ahead and look at the ends of your project. So just pick an end. It really doesn't matter which one you start with. I'll pull out the waste yarn that I had inside. And I'm going to tug on them just a little bit. And what I want to do, see how the yarn just kind of naturally rolls. I'm going to try to unroll it a little bit here. And I want to bring those two ends together. And I'm going to try to have where my waist yarn is coming out. I'm going to try to collapse that and make that my beginning fold. So let me just align this. And you're going to want to have a flat surface where you can kind of lay out your yarn. So while I have it flat, the main thing you're going to want to do is we're going to do a whip stitch. Now you can do this two ways. You can do a whip stitch to cinch this together because right now it's a tube and we don't want it to be a tube. We want to cinch the two together. And this is where the waist yarn comes in really handy because this contrasting color helps us to really see where the first round of stitches can begin. So let me just show you here how that comes out. So here's my waist yarn and you can see the lighter stitches here. Let me just point it out with the needle. This will be considered my first round. And these are the stitches that I am now going to pick up and cinch with the other side. So what I want you to do is bring the two sides together, kind of sandwich them in. And as you can see, when you do that, you're going to want to make sure that both sides are met together. OK, so I positioned my camera so you can get a better view here. So as you can see, I have the end of my tube and I'm putting both sides together. And you can see here on my tapestry needle, this is what I'll be whip stitching together. So when you do your very first stitch, you'll start to see all of the other ones line up. So you're going to be picking the bottom and the top and then going back to the bottom top, bottom, top, bottom, top, so on and so forth. And we're going to whip stitch that all the way across. So let's go ahead and get our needle threaded. Let me grab my working yarn and I'm going to go ahead and put that through our needle. And you're going to be using the working yarn that's already attached to your project. So if you remember, we left quite a length of yarn in the beginning of our project. So now this is where you're going to be using that yarn to whip the stitch together. Now, another way you could do this is to crochet. So if you do know how to crochet, you can go ahead and crochet these shut. That is another option. But I know a lot of people don't know how to crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and do the whip stitch. So here we are again. I'm going to grab my bottom first hoop and my top hoop. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that yarn in. And I've cinched that close. And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab the next two loops, bottom and top. Bring the yarn over as well. And you'll want to keep that waist yarn out of the way. And then we'll just continue to go down the line. You're just going to want to make sure that you pick the last row on the bottom 
and the top row over here. Just making sure that you're picking the right ones. You want to do the two first rows of your working yarn, not your waist yarn. So go ahead and continue to do the whip stitch and I'll meet you back at the end. Okay, so now you have finished doing your whip stitch. And as you can see now, your tube is now cinched together. So just make sure that you didn't miss any of your stitches and go ahead and give it a little tug just to make sure that your stitches are set. Now, once you have this side done, you're going to repeat the same thing for the other end of the tube, just making sure that you are lining up your so each hoop on the bottom will be lined up to a hoop on the top. So when you sandwich this together with your waist yarn, you should be able to see those stitches pretty easily on which ones you're going to be picking up. So you can see here that they line up nicely and you'll always have a bottom and a top to pick up. And then just do the whip stitch on the other side. And then once you have that, you'll be ready to remove your waist yarn. So go ahead and get that completed and then we'll be ready to take off the waist yarn. Now remember, we're going to be repeating the same step. So we're going to go ahead and re-thread my needle to the working yarn, not the waist yarn. And what we're going to do is use that working yarn to do the whip stitch on the other side of the two. So don't forget to do that. and line up your stitches so that you can pick up the right stitches and make sure that you don't have any drop stitches. Okay, so just to show you this one more time on doing the whip stitch, I'm at the end here and my first row using my working yarn, which is this blue yarn, is down here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that and put that on to my needle. And then I'm going to go to the top row here of my working yarn and put that on my needle as well. And I'll go ahead and do the whip stitch for that. And then that should line me up for the rest of the whip stitches that I have to do. Just making sure that you start bottom going up to the top and then just pull yarn over. Okay, so starting on the bottom again, finding my top loop here. These are the two I want to loop together. So I'll go ahead, pull my yarn through. Starting on the bottom again, finding my next loop and my top loop here. And you'll continue this all the way across. Okay, so if you grab your stitches correctly, you should have two remaining in the end, one on the bottom and one on the top. And you'll want to grab those last two stitches and just do your last whip stitch. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back and do another one under the same loop. And what I'm going to do is just tie a little knot to cinch that completely shut. So I'll just pass my needle through that little hole just to do the knot. There we go. And you can do a second one if you'd like. Just to kind of secure it in place. There we go. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and get our scissors and we can clip that off. Okay, and you want to pull on those, make sure they are completely cinched closed. Perfect. So now we're ready to take off our waist yarn. So for this, you're going to want to just grab onto your waist yarn here and give it a little tug. Now, this side of the waist yarn was the one that I finished with. So it's a lot easier to take off. As you can see, all you need to do is pull the yarn and it will come right off. Now, the one that you started your project with requires an extra step. So let's start off with this one because it's an easy one to pull off. And you'll know which end is the one you started with and which one's the knot because once you pull on it, it'll start to unravel. Where on the other side, when I pull on it, it will not unravel as easily. So you'll notice that when you start to pull it. I like to kind of just lay lines flat to give it that final tug. 
And there we go. Waste yarn is off. And as you can see, our ends are cinched together. Let's go over to the other side. Now I want to do the same thing on this end. Let's just fold this over here. And I'm going to pull on my working yarn. I'm going to go ahead and give that one a knot as well, in case you haven't done that. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to pull it through here, make a little knot. I like to use the needle just to cinch it in as close as I can. And I'll do a second knot as well, just to kind of give me that extra security. Okay, go ahead and cut off that working yarn. Again, all our stitches are already nice and benched. Now, for this side of the working yarn, when you pull it, you'll notice it doesn't unravel as quickly as the other one. So what you'll need to do is kind of unravel because I know it kind of curls up on its own. So let me just show you here. You'll notice that your yarn is inside that first strand. Let me just get my tapestry needle so I can kind of show you this a little bit easier. So here is our waste yarn. I'm just going to tug this a little bit. You can see here, this waste yarn is over on the top and it's kind of looped in place. So you will have to pull that yarn out, at least for the first row. So just continue to pull it off that first row. You'll see where it's kind of weaving in and out here. You'll have to pull that out. Once you pulled it out for the first round, then it will start to unravel. So just take your time every two or three loops, just kind of pull on it. You can pull on it with your tapestry needle the way I am. And then that kind of just takes it out, makes it a little bit easier. See we're coming around here and you see that waist yarn is on that top loop that you'll have to just take off here. Here's that a better view there of that top yarn. This is the yarn that you'll be removing. So you'll want to pull on that one. I'm getting towards that end. So it's kind of wanting to unravel on its own at this point. Okay. Once you've gotten to that point, now you can just kind of lay it flat and just continue to pull on it and it will unravel. So now. Your waist yarn is completely off of your working yarn and you have both sides that are cinched on the end. So at this point, if you want to stop here, you can and you can use this as just a regular scarf. As you can see, it is long enough to use as a regular scarf, but we're going to make an infinity scarf. So what we are going to do now is we are going to cinch the two ends together. Now, again, we're going to be doing this with a whip stitch, or if you know how to crochet, you can crochet them together. So we're going to line them up here. And let me bring the camera a little closer so you can see. So these are the two that we're going to be lining up and doing a whip stitch together. So you have all of the loops on this end and the loops on this side. And you're going to want to just bring the two together. So here's one loop here, and here's another loop from the other side. Those are the two that you'll be joining, and you'll want to just line them up so that the stitches will be nice and neat. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of that working yarn that we have left over, just give it about 20 inches of working yarn should be just fine. And then we're going to go ahead and going to thread that onto the needle and begin the whip stitch. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my first loop here and the first loop on the other side. Now for the first stitch, I'm going to go ahead and do a little knot on that since it is the first stitch just to make sure that it stays in place. And I'll just do a double knot. And I'll cut off the excess just so it stays out of the way. 
Now I'm just going to go ahead and continue whip stitching all the way across. Now always remember to go from bottom to top. Okay, so we're coming on to our last one. We're picking up here. Go ahead and do the last whip stitch. And then again, I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna backtrack about two loops, bring it back around, and I'll put my needle through the loop just to cinch it. And it's just basically doing a knot. Then if you want, you can secure it with a second knot. Perfect. Now I'll go ahead and cut that off. And you now have your stitches in place. And you go ahead and stretch the yarn out a little bit, kind of set it in. And you'll want to cut off those extra pieces that you left out from the knots. Just cut them closer to your project. And that is it. You now have your infinity scarf that you can use for the winter. This infinity scarf is absolutely beautiful. I'm sure it's gonna make a great gift for family and friends. So that's it guys. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I host weekly live sessions on Saturday. So I hope you can join us for our Saturday crafternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Thanks again, everyone, and I hope to be crafting with you soon. Bye.